Welcome back to the program. You're watching Global Business Africa. Now, the Greek energy minister says he expects an agreement with international creditors soon. But he says any such deal must respect the dignity of the citizens of the Hellenic Republic. Panagiotis Lafazanis is also the leader of the far-left flank of the ruling Syriza party. He expects a deal with creditors soon. He is opposed to any bailout, however, that has tough austerity measures which would stifle growth. With hours left to produce a new proposal for reform, the Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras faces a challenge in convincing creditors that his is sincere in the reforms he's proposing, but also retaining the support of his party. Greek authorities have extended a shutdown of the country's banks until the 13th of July. They restricted cash withdrawals to 60 euros a day. The closure was enforced after aid talks between Greece and its creditors imploded. Ladies and gentlemen, it is obvious that Greece aims at clinching an agreement soon with the institutions. However, we want an agreement that respects the dignity of our country and our people and which opens a way out of the current crisis. We don't want, after two failed bailouts, to add a third bailout of tough austerity, suffering and deprivation of the Greek people, which will not give any prospect in the country. A message to Europe. We are united on a constitutional and legislative level. We move forward to support the view that the red line is that Greece remains in the euro and in the eurozone. The legislative procedure for these issues, which are not personal issues, should not be discussed in the absence of the Greek people. We were all united. The democratic forces that support the European history of the country we are united to say that there is no intention or even thought of us breaking off. Furthermore, we are all united in the endeavor to secure the place of Greece in both Europe and the Eurozone, because these two go together. Right then, let's see how much closer we are to a Brexit. Jack Barton is covering the story. He's uh, focused on events in Brussels. Kate Parkinson has been covering developments in Athens. Kate, let's start with you. What more do we know about this reform proposal that the Greek Prime Minister is supposed to present to the creditors? Well, the uh, Greek Prime Minister has until midnight tonight to put forward this new reform proposal uh, ahead of Sunday's summit, which will ultimately decide the future of Greece in Europe. We don't have precise details of the plan, but we do know that Alexis Tsipras, the Greek Prime Minister, has chaired a marathon cabinet meeting today as they've tried to hammer out the details of this proposal. There have been some leaks in Greek media, one report saying that the new austerity measures could add up to 13 billion euros. This is actually more austerity than in the previous agreement that Tsipras rejected, held a referendum about on Sunday, and the Greek public overwhelmingly rejected. So it might be difficult to get this new reform plan past his supporters. But it will be less difficult to get it past the people who are currently protesting behind me in Syntagma Square. Hundreds of people have turned out in a pro-Europe rally. These are the people that voted yes in Sunday's referendum. They want an agreement to be signed as quickly as possible to end the economic gridlock in Greece, to get the banks reopened. And fundamentally, their message tonight to Alexis Tsipras as they hold this protest outside the Greek parliament is Greece must stay in the Eurozone. Indeed, Jack, let's come to you. I mean, even the IMF itself, which would, to put it bluntly, is essentially the home of the high priests of fiscal austerity, they agree that Greek debt levels are unsustainable. Here's a quote from a June report. Haircuts on debt will become necessary. So why is the ECB and Euro area finance, finance ministers, why are they so strongly opposed to the idea of cutting Greece's debt? The IMF doesn't just believe that Greece's current debt load is unsustainable. That IMF report shows that even if Greece were to implement every single reform that's being asked of it by the creditors, that debt load would still be unsustainable by 2030. So it's a very strong case there. But of course, the IMF doesn't want 
any more of its um, debt written off. So the IMF doesn't want to be included in that write-off, even though Greece has already missed one repayment to the International Monetary Fund. It wants the European countries and the European Central Bank uh, to take the hit. So perhaps more understandably, they're not so keen on it, particularly Germany, which is owed the largest sum of money. Uh, but France, which is Oh, the second largest sum has been uh, a little bit more tolerant in this area. We've heard from French officials saying this subject shouldn't be taboo anymore. Uh, we should perhaps consider a debt write-off. And today we really have heard a growing number of voices calling for this. The most important among them is Donald Tusk, the president of the European Council of Leaders. So he's the man that oversees those leaders' summits. Um, and he came out very clearly today saying a credible proposal from Greece has to be met with a credible proposal from the creditors, and that would have to include debt relief. And that's clearly the argue, uh, argument he will bring as he gathers those leaders together on Sunday if Greece uh, finally lodges that formal proposal. Uh, Kate, coming to you, Greece's tourism sector is a vital component of any recovery plan uh, for the country's economy. How is it coping with the current economic turmoil and the capital controls that have been in place for a couple of days now? Well, on the one hand, here in Athens, you can see very clearly that this is a country uh, going through a, an extraordinary economic crisis at the moment. The banks have been closed uh, since June the 28th and will remain closed till July the 18th. You see long queues uh, of people uh, waiting outside the ATMs every day in the scorching heat to get their hands on the very small amount of cash they're allowed uh, to get out of their accounts at the moment. But on the other hand, you see uh, the, the town uh, brimming with tourists, people visiting the museums, visiting the ancient sites, uh, shopping in the main areas. Uh, it's a bit of a contradiction because uh, it's really uh, as if the tourism industry is uh, shielded from this economic crisis. And certainly there are reports that life on the islands, the, the beautiful Greek islands, which attract uh, millions of visitors every year, uh, people say it's as if there's no crisis there whatsoever and certainly uh, governments around Europe whose uh, uh, citizens are traveling to Greece are advising them make sure you have enough cash in your pockets you're not going to be able to get money out of the ATMs uh, and as long as people are following the advice of their governments there's no reason uh, why they would be affected uh, by this crisis certainly there have been reports that there could be food shortages there could be uh, medical shortages but again this doesn't seem to be uh, concerning the tourists who are visiting uh, Greece at the moment and tour operators say they're not seeing any cancellations, uh, any significant cancellations from international visitors. The only impact that they're really feeling in the tourism industry is from internal tourism. Greeks who are cancelling their holidays in Greece because they don't have the funds to go on holiday at the moment. Indeed. Uh, one final question for you, Jack. We, we covered Germany briefly before, but Walk us through the domestic and the regional political factors that prevent Germany from agreeing to any kind of debt cancellation or restructuring for that matter. Germany is an unusual case. Economics in Germany has a moral component to it, and it has really ever since uh, the, uh, the 1930s uh, during hyperinflation in Germany. And really, the policies ever since then have been driven at keeping inflation within tow. We see this Germany continuously putting uh, pressure on the European Central Bank to stick within its mandate of keeping inflation at levels and doing nothing else, certainly not QE. So it has this moral component. But Greek Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras, as he pointed out yesterday, this is somewhat hypocritical because last century Germany was one of the biggest recipients of debt write-offs in Europe. In fact, it was the biggest recipient, uh, particularly in 1953 when 60% of all of the country's debts were uh, forgiven uh, to, to allow it to get it back on its feet again after the Second World War. It also got a massive growth program as well, and that allowed Germany to become the economic success it is today. Uh, that's something it's not allowing Greece to have. It's an opportunity it's not extending. And Chancellor Angela Merkel made it very clear today that, again, Germany is not going to consider any direct cut uh, in German debt. And she's already said she would face a rebellion within her own party if she were to do that. But she did today indicate she might allow a little fudging around the corner. So say if interest rates were manipulated or uh, debt repayments were pushed a little bit further down in the future, that's perhaps something she can get away with. 
But in a way, it's her own fault. She's been taking such a hard line on this over the past few years that the electorate now is absolutely, well, they're supporting a Greek exit. The majority of Germans want, Greek out of the, uh, want Greece out of the euro area, and that's the electorate that Angela Merkel answers to. So, you know, that's very much informing her policy at the moment. Indeed. We'll leave it there for the time being. Thank you both for your input. Jack Barton in Brussels and Kate Parkinson live in Athens. The Spiegel had a fairly interesting article around the reasons why Germans fear inflation so much. Worth reading if you can't find the time for that.